Hello and welcome to our evening reflection for Monday the 7th of September. Our reading this evening comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, and reading verses 13 to 20. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus says, providing an expression which has become one of the highest compliments we can pay anyone, as it highlights both their worth and their usefulness. Salt was highly valued in the ancient world, for it had three special qualities, purity, preservation and flavour. The Romans said that salt was the purest of all things because it came from the sun and the sea and it was used as a sacrifice to the Roman gods as well as being offered along with Jewish sacrifices. But what does it mean for us to be like salt? Well, it seems we should be an example of purity, not by acting piously or as if we believe ourselves better than other people, but by refusing to conform to the standards of the secular world and allow them to dilute the beliefs we hold. One of the commonest uses for salt was, and still is, as a preservative. And so our task is to help preserve the Christian teaching in a world that often holds it in contempt or at the very least dismisses it as irrelevant. The church's role is to continue to tell the story of faith and offer it as a new and better way to live. The flavour of salt is unique. Without it, food tastes bland and uninteresting. If you've ever been on a low-salt diet, you'll understand just how dull and insipid food can be without added seasoning. And so Jesus calls us, the salt of the earth, to bring flavour to life. It's a sad fact that Christians are often accused of being dull and bland, of being humourless and judgmental, or of never having any fun. Just think how often television soap operas, sitcoms and dramas portray Christians as pious, weak or boring individuals. But in a broken world, where violence, prejudice and hatred flourish, our task as Christians is to allow our faith to shine out and demonstrate that there is another way to live a way of peace and love that, if allowed to grow and flourish, can lead to reconciliation and healing. Our faith is in a generous God who by his grace offers us new life through Jesus Christ. So our lives should reflect a sense of joy and fulfilment. For if we live as though our faith has made no difference to life, and we can hardly be surprised if we fail to convince others. You are the light of the world, Jesus continues. We are to live as lights to the world, by example, and by offering to our fellow human beings some of the love we have ourselves received. You are the light of the world. When Jesus spoke these words, he was using an expression familiar to the Jews, for they often spoke of Jerusalem as a light to the Gentiles, and a famous rabbi was often referred to as a lamp of Israel. 
but we need to appreciate the Jewish understanding of the light, for it allows us to hear what Jesus really meant. For the Jews, no person ever kindled his own light. Jerusalem was indeed a light to the Gentiles, but it was God who lit Israel's lamp. The light with which the nation or individuals shone was always a borrowed light, and we need to remember this when we seek to be a light to the world. For we're not required to produce our own light, but rather to shine with the reflection of the light of Christ. So what did Jesus mean when he told his followers to be the light of the world? Well, firstly, a light is something which is meant to be seen. In Palestine, the lamps resembled a sauce boat filled with oil with a wick floating in it. And in days long before matches existed, it was very difficult to kindle a flame so that once lit, the lamp was rarely extinguished. When people left their homes, they would remove the lamp from its stand and cover it under an earthen bushel for safety's sake, so it could burn safely until their return. And hence the phrase, do not hide your lamp under a bushel. Light needs to be seen if it is to serve any useful purpose. So our faith needs to be clearly visible to everyone, not hidden out of sight and hoarded for our own purposes alone. Nor should the light be confined within the walls of our churches. We may feel safest and most secure when expressing our faith amongst like-minded people. But we are called to be a light to the nations and take the gospel message out into the world. And finally, light is used as a guide. As a lighthouse prevents ships from being grounded on the rocks, as runway lights clearly mark out the path for an aircraft to land, so we are to be lights that guide people along their pilgrimage of faith. And the thought that it's our behaviour that will define for others what it means to be a Christian is scary. But it is true. But let's remember that it is not our light that is to shine, but rather the light of Christ within us and surrounding us that enables us to be light and salt to others. Amen. Our prayer comes from Roots for Churches. Let us pray. Lord, you call us to be the salt of the earth, yet we have lost the excitement of being called disciples. You call us to be the salt of the earth, yet we have lost the vision of what the kingdom is about. You call us to be the salt of the earth, yet we huddle in the safety of our church community. You call us to be the salt of the earth, Yet we have become tasteless and undistinguishable from the world. God forgive us and restore us as the salt of the earth to add excitement and vision, inclusion and flavour and to live in every moment as salt in your world. Amen. Good night. Thank you for watching.